Please go to elithecomputerguy.com in order to view schematics, code, and more for the projects that you are learning about. Welcome back. So in today's video, I'm going to show you how to use an analog temperature sensor with an Arduino. So this is a great little sensor, both for the real world and for practicing and creating your own labs. In the real world, having a temperature sensor can be great because environmental monitoring is a big deal in the IoT world. Basically making sure your server room is as cold as it's supposed to be, office or home spaces are at the, the, the proper temperature that they're supposed to be, or maybe possibly that a greenhouse is as warm as it's supposed Supposed to be. One of the things uh, that can be very valuable in the IoT world is simply knowing what the temperature of different locations can be. So that's one of the reasons that this is a great sensor to learn how to use. The other reason this is a great sensor to learn how to use is that when you're going to be learning how to do uh, if-else statements, basically be able to trigger events with the Arduino based off of different variable values, the analog temperature sensor can be very useful because this is something that you can change very easily and then see what happens. So basically, if the temperature is below a certain level, you can have an LED light be green. If it goes above a certain level, you can have a, an LED uh, light turn red. Maybe if it goes above a certain level, you can have a fan turn on. You can do those different types of projects. So this can be a, a way that makes it very easy to be able to adjust variables or to change a variable value uh, without actually having to go into the code. So basically, you can just have this, this, uh, this little temperature sensor and again, like if you want to turn on a motor, if a value goes above a certain level, you can use a temperature sensor. Basically, just put your finger on it. As the temperature uh, goes up, then the, the value will go above whatever you've set in your if-else statement, and then the motor can turn on. So that's one of the reasons that's, that this can be valuable. Just with playing around, again, like triggering events to happen, if you want to trigger an LED to turn on, or a buzzer to turn on, or a motor to turn on, or even like a message or something else to fire off, using one of these temperature sensors can be a very uh, good way to do that because they're very simple to use, they're very inexpensive, uh, and they're very very easy to work with. So with that, let's go over to the workbench so I can show you the components that we'll be using for this project, then I'll show you the code, and then show you how it all goes together. So here are the main components for this particular project. Basically, we only have three items. Of course, we're going to be using the Arduino Uno board. You can use other Arduino boards, but this is the standard that we use for our projects. We're going to use a breadboard, basically just as a way to, uh, to be able to connect the analog sensor to the uh, jumper wires. And then we just have a simple, inexpensive uh, analog sensor here. So these are the main components that we're going to be needing for this particular project. And all you do in order to hook them all together is basically this is the full project actually set up. So we have the, uh, the UNO board here, and then we have the analog temperature sensor in the breadboard. Now when you're looking at the analog temperature sensor and you plug it into the breadboard, what you want to do is you want the flat side to be pointed towards you. So the flat side is going to be pointed towards you. And when the flat side is pointed towards you, then the pin to your left, your left now, is going to be the positive pin, the pin to the right, all the way to the right, and that's going to be the ground pin, and the center pin, that is going to be your, your sensor pin. Now, it is important that you set this up correctly. If you swap the, the, the positive and the ground, you most likely will burn out your sensor. It's not that big a deal. They're very inexpensive sensors, but that's one reason you should probably buy these sensors, you know, buy the five or 10 pack if you're gonna do it. But if, if the flat, basically you have it, so the flat is pointed towards you. If the flat is pointed towards you, your left is going to be the positive, your right is going to be the ground, center is going to be the, the analog, the, the sensor. Then with this, basically we're going to be powering it off of 5 volts, so this will get powered off of 5 volt, ground is a normal ground that goes to the UNO board, and then for this particular project, this is going to be an analog pin, this is an analog pin, not a digital pin, so the analog pins are over here on this side, and so this is going to be plugged into analog pin 0. And that's all you have to do in order to actually build this little project. So let's go over to the code and show you how to code for this thing. So here's the code for this particular uh, temperature sensor project. It's uh, relatively simple. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to have to define the sensor pin. So basically uh, the pin that's, that's getting the information from the analog temperature sensor. So we're going to do pound 
define. We're going to call this pin sensor pin, and we're going to say it's A0. So this is important. Whenever you're dealing with analog pins, you put A. So A1, A2, A0, A3. If you're dealing with digital pins, you simply put the number 1, 2, 5, 6, 13, so on and so forth. So here, all we have to do is we have to define um, this pin so we know how to reference it with the rest of the code. Then after that, we're going to go to setup. So we're going to set up the environment that this code is going to run in. And all we are going to do is we're going to set, uh, turn on the serial monitor service. So serial.begin. 9600. Uh, it's important to see here that since this is an analog pin, analog pins are always input pins, so therefore we do not have to define how the pin is going to be used. If we were using a digital pin, we would use the pin mode function, and then we would say whether the pin was input or output, because digital pins can be used both for input or output. Analog pins can only be used for input, so therefore we don't have to say how it's going to be used, because it can only be used for input. And so with that, we've set up the environment, and now we are going to go into the loop. So the first block of code here is where we are going to be creating all of our variables and the values for those variables. The second uh, block of code here is where we're going to be printing out that information to the serial monitor. So the first thing that we need is we're going to have an int variable. So a variable, that's, that's a whole number, 1, 10, 20, so on and so forth. We're going to call it reading. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be reading from the analog pen turning that value uh, into the variable reading. So reading equals analog read, so the analog read uh, function for sensor pin. So this function is going to read what's coming through uh, on the sensor pin, A0, and then that value is going to go into reading. Once we have that value, we then are going to create a float. So a float is a number with a decimal point called voltage. So voltage is going to equal reading times 5. So you, so you analog read from the sensor pin to get reading. Then you multiply reading times 5, and that gets you voltage. From voltage, then you're going to go here. So voltage, what we're going to do is we're going to divide this number up here for voltage we're going to divide that by 1024 and then set the value of voltage to whatever that number is. So whenever you see something like this, like plus equals, minus equals, divided by equals, times equals, what that means is, is do this, do this operation based off of this and then set the value of the variable to that. And so that's what we're going to do. So reading is going to equal the analog read of the sensor pin. Voltage is going to equal reading times 5. And then we're going to deal with voltage again. And we're going to say, okay, take that, divide that by 1024, and then set the value of voltage to be whatever the result is. Then now we're going to go down here, and we're actually going to start getting some temperatures. So we're going to have a float for temperature C. And so temperature C is temperature in Celsius will be voltage minus 0.5 times 100. So that will give us the temperature in Celsius. Then, since you know I'm American, a lot of us use a Fahrenheit system here, then we're going to have a float, so a decimal point variable, for temperature F, temperature Fahrenheit. So in order to get that, you have temperature C times 9 divided by 5 plus 32 and that's going to give us temperature Fahrenheit. Now, it's very important to understand with this, this is just the math of how it works. If you really want to get into it and, and really go very technical and figure out why all these numbers are what they are, you can do that, but just realize if you're using an analog sensor, this is what the math is going to be. This is one of those things you can just, you can paste bin it somewhere, and whenever you're dealing with an analog uh, temperature sensor, you can just copy and paste this. So you don't really have to understand all the math or why the math is as it is. You just have to understand that this is how the math works. Then past that, all we're going to do is we're now going to print out the values of the variables that we've created. So serial.print, the value of voltage, and then serial.print, and then this is what's going to be printed out. So it's going to be space, volt, space, hyphen, space. Then we're going to go serial.print, the value of temperature C, serial.print, uh, space, degrees, space c space hyphen space and then we're going to do serial dot print the value of temperature f then serial dot print line so print line means print this and then go to the next line and so with that 
it'll then print space degrees space F and then it'll go to the next line. Down here, I've set a delay for 3,000 uh, milliseconds, so that's three seconds. Again, you can set this delay uh, to whatever you would like, uh, but I set it to 3,000 milliseconds just so it's a lot easier to read when we're in the serial monitor. So with that, let's, uh, let's connect the, uh, the, the little project up and go to the serial monitor and see what the results are. So let's plug this in. So we're gonna plug in the Arduino. We got the temperature sensor here. We are going to upload the code. It's uploading. And then we are going to go to serial monitor. And now we are getting readings. So we're getting 0.69 volts, comes out to 19.34 degrees Celsius, comes out to 68.8 degrees Fahrenheit. And then it stays relatively stable now. So 0 0.69, 18.85 degrees Celsius, 65.93. And so we can see this temperature. Now that's the important thing whenever you're dealing with a, with a sensor like this is it should stay relatively uh, stable, right? So again, you just saw there where it, it, it blipped uh, up to 66.8. 80 for some reason. And so you may get small little blips like that, but it should be relatively stable. As you can see, most of these are 65.93 degrees Fahrenheit, and then it just blipped up for 66. If you're getting a lot of weird variance here, that may mean that your sensor isn't working properly. Again, another reason why you should buy these sensors by the dozen, go grab another sensor, plug it in, and see if you get a better reading from that. Then, just to show you uh, that the, uh, the serial monitor the, the values of the variables will change if we change the temperature. So I'm simply putting my finger on the top of the sensor that will obviously heat it up. And so now we're up to 68 degrees, 70 degrees, 72 degrees. And uh, yeah, so it's about 72.96. And then if I take my finger off, it should go back down again. If I take a second here. So it goes down to 71 degrees goes down to 70, 70 degrees, so on and so forth. And so again, that's one of the things that makes this sensor very useful for other types of projects, is this is a way you can dynamically change a variable value. Uh, so again, if you're trying to trigger you know, motors to turn on or servers to turn on or lights or something like that, this is a way that you can kind of play with a variable uh, without actually having to go into the code and modify it manually. So that's that's really all there is uh, to this project. It's so just a very simple setup, a very simple and expensive sensor and a little bit of code. So now you know the basic code and setup for an analog temperature sensor. Now this is one of the things that I absolutely love with Arduino because this is again it's a dollar sensor maybe it's you know however much the Arduino board costs but this can actually do a lot of cool things for you in the real world. Again imagine something like a server room imagine uh, making sure that the temperature stays where it's supposed to stay. So if you use one of these things in an Arduino if the temperature goes above a certain level again you can turn on an LED LED, you could turn on a fan, you could turn on a buzzer to alert somebody, you could do a lot of cool interesting things with that. Or if you take one of these analog temperature sensors, you plug this into an Arduino Uno with Wi-Fi, so it's now Wi-Fi connected, you could then put a number of these throughout your facility and then be at, go to like one panel and be able to see all the temperatures in the, the different places within your building and make sure that they're the temperatures that they're supposed to be. So this can be valuable in everything from an industrial setting to a normal office environment, server rooms, to even with your house. Again, put a number of these throughout your house and make sure make sure all the rooms in your house are more or less whatever the temperature that they're supposed to be. This is one of those really inexpensive, easy to use uh, sensors that there really are a lot of valuable things you can, you, projects you can use with this in the real world. So, as always, I enjoy doing this video and I look forward to seeing you at the next one.